want to buy. Now, there's some exceptions we're going to talk about later, but as a rule of thumb, the law of demand is that the higher the price, the lower that these uh, buyers, the, the higher the price, the less the buyers want to buy. So as we go from five to 1,000, look what happens. We get less and less quantity, and this, this uh, graph, this chart, actually, the true demand, it keeps going like this. It keeps going closer and closer to zero as the price goes up, okay? Now, since we have another guy on here, our supply curve, let's look at the same price points, 1,000 and 5, and look what happens to our supply curve. So let's go to 1,000. We're going to do this in blue, and we come out here, and we've got this point out here, right? Then we take 5, and we come out here, but look what happens. We hit the supply curve way over here, right? So now let's come down. Let's bring this quantity down here. Let's take this quantity of $1,000 from suppliers, and let's bring it down. And these are really close, actually. So what do we call this point right here, and what do we call that point right there on the supply curve? We'll have to give these uh, some values. Let's call this, let's say, 3. Wow, this is really close to mine. <laughs> Could have been better with that, and we'll call that... Uh, I don't know, 90, let's say. Okay, so we have 90 and 3. This basically tells us that at $5, suppliers are going to want to make three pairs of shoes. And at $1,000, they're going to want to make 90 pairs of shoes. So it's an inverse relationship, meaning that as the price goes higher, as we move higher along the y-axis, we see that uh, suppliers actually want to buy, want to make more shoes. They want to build. They want to make more. They want to sell because it's a higher price, more profit, more gross revenue. At least they want to make more. So at a thousand, they want to make ninety. At five dollars, they want to make three. Okay. Now we are actually. I didn't uh, think we'd be moving this. Uh, close to our time limit here but let's cover a few uh, a few more items here what um, so that kind of gives us an idea of the difference in the attitudes of the suppliers and the attitudes of the uh, the buy the buyers the people who want to buy shoes the people who make shoes the people who demand who the buyers the consumers who want shoes now let's do this this next part in purple here okay so we have some very interesting thing that things that happen up here so if we look right here at this point right here, what we have is that suppliers are making more shoes, right? They're making more shoes than buyers are buying. They are making 90, but buyers are only buying 5. That means we have 85 left over. That's called a surplus because we have more shoes than buyers want to buy them. And in this case, our surplus is 85. Okay? Now let's come down here and we see the exact opposite thing happening. Because down here, we have buyers wanting to buy a hundred that's in red right the demand is at a hundred but suppliers only want to make three okay so that gives us a 97 and this is what's called a shortage okay now uh, shortage let me spell that a little neater hopefully this will be neater short age it's an easy way to learn how to spell it. Shortage, okay? So we have a shortage over there. And then up here, we have a surplus. So that's what happens when there's in, in, in basically an incongruency in the suppliers and the demand. Now, let's cover the last item we're going to go over in this video, and then we'll uh, stop. Right here, you're probably wondering. You're probably wondering. Let me get the right color. Let's do green. You're probably wondering, Oz, what is this wonderful place here in the center? Right? This is something called equilibrium. I could do that better. Equilibrium. E-Q equilibrium. <laughs> I'm not going to have space to write it. Okay, equilibrium. Well, if you want to see the spelling on it, let's come back here. Where is it? Right here. Okay, equilibrium. What that means... And actually, we're going to cover several of these items here because what happened was this guy, Adam Smith, wrote a book called Wealth of Nations. In it, he talked about this idea that everything that happens in here, that instead of what's called feudalism, which is what it used to be, he was the considered the father of modern capitalism, which gets a lot gets thrown around a lot. But basically, uh, um, the idea is very simple. 
and um, people have different definitions of it, capitalism, but it basically comes down to the fact that the government, the government intervention or some, like a king, it used to be feudalism, then came capitalism in uh, the Netherlands, like Amsterdam was considered the first place of capitalism. But basically what that means is that a king doesn't need to come in and say, okay, you guys make shoes at this price and you guys buy shoes at this price. A king doesn't have to do that or the government doesn't have to come in and tell everyone what to do. Anybody can pretty much do whatever the hell they want. And what will happen is there's an invisible hand here where if you try to make shoes and you try to sell them for a billion dollars, you're probably not going to sell very many shoes. Or in, in some cases you will. We're going to talk about the cases where that would actually make more demand. But uh, generally speaking, to the mass public, that's not going to be too appealing. But you can try. And what will happen is that an invisible hand will come in. The market will tell you that that's not a price buyers want to buy at. So what happens is that to avoid having too many surpluses or too many shortages, the market will kind of massage. You can do whatever you want. People will, are able to do whatever they want. And somehow we'll come to some median agreement, and that's called equilibrium. Now, if we plot equilibrium out here... Let's call this price, uh, I don't know, what do you want, uh, let's say 20. And let's call this down here, if you guys can read all that craziness down there, it's someplace between 5 and 90, what do you, let's say 30, is that fair? Let's call it 30. So what that means is that anybody entering this shoe market, the buyers and sellers are going to come to some type of understanding that... $20 is a good price for shoes, and buyers will want to demand. The demand here, because, right, the demand intersects here, will be about 30 And suppliers are okay. They're willing to sell shoes for $20. They're willing to sell. They want to make about 30 pairs of shoes. And so that's what develops this idea of equilibrium. The market kind of it massages it together, and we come up with an equilibrium price. This is the fundamental idea behind... Um, uh, the invisible hand down here, and this concept of laissez-faire, which basically means let it be. Um, and this is the idea that nobody should intervene. It's considered to be. It's taken to be let it be. But um, let do, let be, the, um, the um, actual translation. But basically means don't mess with any of this stuff. Let the buyers decide what the price is. Let the sellers decide, and it'll come together automatically. And what were some of our other terms before we close out here that we covered? Um, okay, we went over the supply curve, the demand curve, surplus shortage, and the, uh, this last laissez-faire in the free market. This Basically, this whole model here is the free market. That's what determines what a free market... Well, that went away. As I, you guys are, are witnessing my increasing proficiency with this, uh, with this style. Um, basically, this entire idea of supply and demand... This entire concept here is based on this this uh, whole free market that, you know, do whatever you want, lay say fair, let it go, and eventually the market will find a price that is suitable for everybody. Okay, these other items here, uh, we are going to, okay, we're going to talk about elasticity and some of these other items. And then the most important episode for you uh, builders out there is going to be when we talk about changing demand and the basics of how to do that to grow companies. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you have questions about any of these items that we covered here, let me know, and uh, we will make sure that we get uh, we get your questions answered. That is the basics of the supply and demand curve. Hope that helps.